One of the best ways to master Lenz's law is to look at single loops immersed in magnetic fields as shown below. You see two columns, a before column and an after column. In the before column, the red X's or dots represent the initial magnetic field that the loop is immersed in, and in the after column, it shows how that magnetic field, that external magnetic field, has changed. Our goal is to figure out which direction the current will be flowing in these various loops due to this change in flux. Now remember, flux basically is how many field lines you're capturing in that given area. The formula for magnetic flux is B times A. So if we look at our very first loop, we see that it's immersed in a magnetic field that's going into the page as represented by the X's. So in my before scenario, it's capturing a large magnetic field and therefore it has a, a flux into the page. After the magnetic field is turned off, it's not capturing any field lines, so there's definitely been a change in flux. So our goal is to use Lenz's law and determine which way the current is. Now remember with Lenz's law, the important concept you have to remember is that it wants to stay in its original configuration. It doesn't want to change. So its original configuration was capturing X's. So in the after loop, it's going to generate a current in that, in that loop to put the X's back. All we're concerned with is inside the loop. So to put the X's back, which way is the current going to flow? Is it going to flow clockwise or counterclockwise? And for that, we use our first right-hand rule, where our thumb points in the direction of the current, and our fingertips will wrap around the wire and point in the direction of the magnetic field. And remember, all we're worried about is inside the loop. So for us to put X's inside the loop, our current will have to flow clockwise. Let's look at our bottom arrow and try it. Our thumb points in the direction of the current, which is to the right, and my fingertips will wrap around the wire in the direction of the magnetic field. So my tips will be into the page inside the loop and out of the page on the other side of the loop. And since all we care about is inside the loop, you can see no matter where I arrange my thumb, we're going to put those X's back and get back to our original configuration. In this configuration, we say that the current is clockwise. The next one is just a slightly different configuration. We see that initially we have quite a strong magnetic field and the dots represent the fact that the magnetic field is out of the page. And what we're doing is weakening that external magnetic field. So it might be produced by some sort of electromagnet and we're reducing the current. So there's fewer dots. Remember the number of dots or the density of dots tells us the strength of that magnetic field. So the goal is to get back to its original configuration inside the loop. So originally we had a large number of dots inside the loop, and now we have a small number of dots. We want to get back to the original, so we need to add dots. So if I use my green pen to represent this induced magnetic field, we need to put some dots back so that we can get the same amount of flux that we had originally. So my fingertips have to be pointed out of the page inside of the loop and my thumb will align itself in the direction of the current. And if you do that, you should see that the current is counterclockwise in this case. The last one's slightly different. Again, we start with a loop capturing an external magnetic field that's into the page and quite a large flux initially. And now you can imagine you grab each side of the loop with your hands and you pull on it. And you squish the loop down into this new shape. And if I change the shape of that loop, the effective area that's capturing those field lines is diminished. And remember that flux is B times A. So instead of changing the external magnetic field in this case, we're changing the area. So there's less area to capture the X's. So it's going to induce a current to put the X's back inside that loop. So how is that going to look? Well, we want to get X's back inside the loop. So I'll start with that. I'll draw some X's inside the loop to get the flux back up to where it was. My fingertips will be positioned into the paper and my thumb will be aligned in the direction of the current. 
And if we do that, we get the same as we had in scenario one, where the current is flowing clockwise. So in this case, once again, we get a clockwise current.